Hello, my name is Brian and welcome to the WIN 911 How-To Instructional Video Series. In this video, I will be discussing InTouch and how you can bring your alarms over into WIN 911. A quick rundown of the video, I'll be showing you the InTouch setup, including your applications and how you do the communication, plus watchdogs. From there, I'll be showing you the two different methods you can have to bring your alarms over, including subscription filters and the alarm import. Along the way, I'll also be showing you a nice tool we have called the Log Viewer you can use for troubleshooting. On our website, Win911, there's some great reference material you can have for configuring your InTouch settings. Uh, from the Resources tab, the full online users, there's the manual. And once inside the manual, you click Win911, Alarming, and InTouch. The first step in the process is applications. So inside of Win911, the alarming, in touch applications, and on the application tab here. Inside here you have application, and here's your name. This usually matches your in touch application name. Here's mine's called Win911. We also have a node name. You can point to your node from these little ellipses there. The next is a recommended step using watchdogs. So you could configure something such as a PLC heartbeat or some kind of SCADA alarm you'd like to configure. Again, you're still in the Applications tab under the watchdogs. Here you can assign your name. I'm using a PLC heartbeat. Um, you need a little description and the tag name here. From there, you can decide the timeout and a strategy. The strategy I have here is my own I created called System Configuration. And this strategy will point to a tactic or a call list of people. If you're not familiar with tactics and strategies, please go back and watch our how-to instructional videos. This slide is a quick rundown of all the SCADAs that Win911 supports for our Direct Connects, including Factory Talk, iFix, Simplicity, InTouch ME, System Platform, and of course today I'll be showing you InTouch. If you don't have one of these SCADAs, you can use OPC to connect to our Win911 product. Using InTouch, you have two options to bring your alarms over. This includes alarm import and subscriptions. If you use subscriptions, you can filter on tag name, group, and priorities. A quick rundown of the two different methods in the comparison. Alarm filters, you can, again, you can filter on those three items, tag names, groups, and priorities, but it's a dynamic means of bringing your alarms over. And what does this mean? Say, for example, you have five drive faults, drive fault one, two, three, and four, and five. If you add a sixth drive fault and you're filtering on the word drive for your tag name, you could this item would automatically be brought over into the subscription and you wouldn't have to do any additional configuration. So it's a very powerful tool that you can have. Also with filters, uh, it's a little bit less taxing on the processor and doesn't take up as much RAM. So it's a nice advantage of using alarm filters. The alternative for that is alarm import method, which is similar to version 7, where you'll grab your alarms and you'll point them to a specific people you want to call out using our strategies. First, I'll be demoing the subscription filter method. Inside of Win911, the alarming InTouch subscriptions tab, this is something you'll have for your configuration. As you can see, we have those specific tag names, specific group, specific uh, priority range that you can filter on. These items are all anded, anded together, and you can use any combination of these. The blue items individually inside of here, they're ORed. So in this example, we are filtering on a specific tag name that contains water, but does not contain VAL. So either or of these is included. And it's looking for a specific group of wildcard safety or wildcard pump. Notice the little asterisk, that's our wild card. So anything up to that and anything past pump is also included. Finally, we're looking for something that includes a specific priority range between 500 and 999. You can also filter on just a specific priority. Say, for example, if you knew the priority was exactly 602. Here is an example of some alarms that I will be bringing over into our Win911 system. The first step in the process is not only knowing what alarms you have, but who they go to, and then analyzing them to determine what common themes they have. For these alarms here, I, want, I would like all these items in the red to go to our technicians. So I have a strategy called technicians, and this strategy will point to a callout list of people. 
So anything with the word drive, those drive faults one through five I talked about earlier, I will filter on a tag name drive, and then I'll point these to our technicians. The ni next item, we have palletized or light curtain alarms. We would like these to go to our operators, and I've grouped these in a safety uh, group. One thing to note over here with InTouch is the default group for your uh, InTouch is the dollar sign system group, um, but I've gone ahead and I've created my own group and I call it safety. The last item on the list, we have a couple alarms related to the palletizer, the, the misread, and the low pressure. We would like these to go to our engineers in that strategy, and these alarms have a priority of 800 to 830. In the next few slides, I'll be showing you how you can bring these over into Win911. Filtering by tag name. That first item was technicians. This is our first filter, so we name it technicians, and we will filter by our tag name, specific tag name. As you recall, we have uh, tag name PKG1, drive fault 1, underscore fault, these very long names, and we have five of these items total. You can use this drop down here to select anything for contains, does not contain uh, a wildcard, and with this item you can use the little asterisk for your wildcard. So I've chose to use uh, contains drive. So anything before is included, anything after here is included. We will save that and move on to our next subscription filter. The next item is operators. So in here, as we said, we wanted to filter on the safety uh, group. Again, you can use contains, does not contain, wildcard. I chose to use wildcard, safety, wildcard. So we will filter on that group. We'll save that item and move on. Last item we chose was priority. We'd like to filter for engineers for a specific priority range between 800 to 830. You can also filter again on that specific, specific priority if you had it, and this is how you would set that up. One item you'll notice I have here is a label. So if you were to click the plus sign, you can add a label to these. There's a couple of pre-configured ones that you can use, or you can create your own. So anything with this alarm that comes in will have a safety label. Now, to really take advantage of this feature, you would need the advanced license of the software. And an example of this would be you creating an advanced tactic that would call out based on a label safety. Anything with a safety label would go to a specific call out based on time of day, a group of people, whatever it might be. But again, to do that type of call out based on a safety label I created here, you would, you would require the advanced license of our software. Okay, now let's talk about subscription routes. At this point in the configuration, we've already created our subscriptions, the alarms that we want to bring in, and we've named them. Now we need to point them somewhere. What you'll do is you click the plus button down here, and you you'll point the subscription you made to a strategy. In this first example here, I'm pointing my technician's filter to the uh, strategy called technicians. This strategy called technicians will point to a call list of people. You can name, name these subscriptions and strategies whichever you would like. I personally prefer to name them uh, the same thing so then I know from end to end what the items are going to. And now our next one, you add operators and you point that to your operator strategy. You add engineers to the engineer strategy. So all these items have now been pointed. Um, we filtered all of our alarms in and now they're going to specific strategies. So what happens is the alarms comes in come in and now it's going to check the alarm against all these criteria. So first of all, alarm will come in. Let's say it's a specific severity for our engineer's filter. It will check against the technicians. Does this meet the criteria? No. Does this operator's uh, filter meet the criteria? No. Does this have a specific priority? Yes, it does. So it does. We'll point out to the engineer's call out list. Now you have the ability to move these items up and down and rank order these subscription filters however you may choose. Typically you put your highest um, priority or highest severity or most critical alarms up at the top. Now what happens in a scenario where your alarm is not being caught by a subscription? Maybe you didn't have the correct case sensitivity and these items are case sensitive in our subscriptions. Or maybe you mistyped something or didn't filter on the correct criteria. In that scenario, the alarm would filter through all these and not go anywhere. To avoid that, we create an item called a catch-all. So what we do is we create another filter at the very bottom called all alarms. So remember, alarms are going to filter through one, two, three, four, and eventually be caught by this all alarms. And you can point it to whatever strategy you choose. I chose to point it to a do not notify strategy. And I'll show you on the next uh, few slides using our log viewer how you can use this as a troubleshooting tool.
Okay, what is Log Viewer? Log Viewer is a storing which basically logs all the events going on inside of Win911, including all the alarms went through, the date time, and things of that nature. You can access this, uh, this item through the Win911 folder, or there's a desktop icon here. So it records all the events, the date and time, if the alarms are active, acknowledged, unacknowledged, and things of that nature. Inside of the log viewer, here's an example of what you'll have. So you'll be on the alarms tab, and you'll see the alarm that comes through to say the alarm is, if it's active or unactive, acknowledged, um, the alarm, the tag, and then your source. This would be your in-touch source for your example. Uh, it also shows your uh, strategy that deployed, and this was a critical system, the advanced maintenance, in the time of day. You can use some filtering for any of these items. You'll have probably a lot more alarms than just the two. And you can go up here and you can filter back in time to see past alarms that went through. Another item that you have uh, access to is you can acknowledge specific alarms and you can make sure that that goes through to your SCADA. If you click on the notifications tab up here, here's a detailed example of what you'll have inside of there. As you can see, you have the, the user, the email, the, it would, this would be your call, SMS, whichever um, item would went through. It would show if it was dispatched, success, and things of that nature. Okay, going back to that uh, scenario with the troubleshooting, we added that do not notify strategy, if you recall. So in this case, this means that alarm is filtered through all of these um, subscription filters and is caught by the all alarms. So say, for example, you didn't have the case sensitivity correct on your subscription filter, and that is something that you should be aware of. Our inside of Win 901, items are case sensitive for your subscription filters. Um, or let's say you didn't have the right items you're filtering on, or whatever the case might be. Your filter didn't catch the alarm, well now we point to, to the do not notify. Using Log Viewer, we can see exactly the alarm that went off and that it went to the do not notify. In that scenario, when we see that it went to the do not notify, given our current subscription routes up here, that's an indicator that, hey, I need to go back and reevaluate my subscriptions and make sure I'm catching the right items. Next, I'll be discussing the second method for bringing your alarms over, which is the alarm import. For alarm import, again, you'll be in your alarming InTouch ME. This time, you'll click on your imports tab. When you do this, a little pop-up will appear here that gives you a little message, and you can click the next button. So alarm import, this is similar to version 7, where you'll group your alarms, and now you'll point them to a specific strategy. Once you click the next button, again, a screen will pop up like this where you'll be able to select your application. Our application is called Win911. Next, you can click this little plus button to upload your CSV file. If you don't have the CSV file, on the next slide I can show you exactly um, how you can do that and there's some more information on our website. So here's a quick rundown. I won't go through all of this. This information is available in that document I showed you originally for the resources, if you go to that, they'll show you step-by-step -step on how to create the CSV file if you don't know how to do this. Um, also, inside of Win911, there's a little question mark up top. If you click that, it's interactive, and it'll take you to specific information related to that page that you're on. So once you have the CSV file, you can upload it, and then you'll eventually be on this next page here. You'll be on the alarm import um, page, and you'll use these little arrows to point your alarms over. So select all over, all back, individual items over, and you point which alarms you would like to bring over and bring them into Win911. So this is where you select, uh, drag and drop which ones you want to bring over and not. Eventually, once you have your alarm set, you can assign specific strategies. You'll have a strategy you can assign to. Again, we put these through engineers, and they're going to go to um, a specific call out. Final step in the process, you can click Next, and it'll go through the alarm import. And the time it takes to complete the import will depend on how many tags you have. From there, you can click the Finish button. And then inside of Win911, you can review the Tags uh, tab. And you can see all your alarms that you brought over and the strategy that they went to. That's all for our InTouch Alarm Filters and Imports video. Thank you for watching.